Okay, so first of all, DEXTA right here stands for Dual Energy X-Ray Absorptiometry. That's supposed to be an M. Okay, so what is it doing? It's measuring the bone mass, usually for women that are postmenopausal. So uh, why postmenopausal? Because women that are postmenopausal decrease making what hormone they decrease making estrogen and estrogen is a protective factor for bone growth so that's why as estrogen decreases so does bone growth and that's why you end up with conditions of bone loss that we're going to discuss so before we go over this report here just go to the bottom and just see the different scale so if we were going to make a scale here and it's over on the left, but I'm just redrawing it. The scale, let's say we'll start at 1, here's 0, and these are positive numbers up here, so positive 1, 0, and then over here we have negative 1. Okay, so this area right here, down to negative 1, this is normal. This is normal bone uh, size, or sorry, bone density, okay? And then we go down here, when we go from 1 and we go all the way down to negative 2.5, so it's actually negative 2.49, this area right here, uh, it's, I don't know, it's called different ways. It can be called either low bone mass or you may see the term osteopenia. So that's again from negative 1 to negative 2.5. And then anything else that's below that, that's going to be termed osteoporosis. So basically you got normal, then we could say you got, you know, less severe, maybe medium, and then osteoporosis would be the most severe. Okay, so where do you read these? You read them here on uh, what we call a T-score. If you notice here, we have four sections that we're looking at. We're looking at um, the anterior, posterior spine, the AP spine, right? That's one area we're going to look at. And you see the arrow is showing the spine, the vertebra over here. And then we look at the left hip, we look at the neck of the femur on the left side, and then the distal part of the forearm. So we're looking at these four regions, and we're looking at the T-score of each one. You see each one has a T-score here. T-score, what is it determined by, is standard deviations. So if I could just draw here uh, standard deviation, right, just draw the bell curve, and then you divide uh, up your percentages, such as, you know, this percent here has about 68% of people. So from here to here, that's one standard deviation. So you might have seen the sign here, this the sigma here. All right, so that's one standard deviation up. This would be one standard deviation this way. So basically, we're saying a T, right? So if we went two standard deviations, then we're like we'd say T equals two. Up here, if it was one standard deviation, we'd say T equals one. If we're going down the other way, we'd say T equals negative one. If we're going down two standard deviations, we say T equals negative two. Maybe it's a little better. I have a little graph down here. You can see. So we'd say about the mean of the populations right here. So we'd say about 100 people have the, the mean <clears throat> in this perfect bell curve. So one standard deviation is 20 people this way. So this would be like t equals 1. If we went one and a half standard deviations, it's say t equals 1.5, for example, right? And if we go the other way, then it becomes a negative number. Okay, so going back up here, if we look at the t-scores, we're saying, okay, if we look at the spine, what, what is this condition? Bone density means we have more holes, right? So normal bone has a little bit of holes, as you see. But osteoporosis, you can see the holes are much bigger, and there's many more of them, so the bone's not dense. It's brittle, so it could break easier. Okay, so in this case, the T-score is negative 1.5. So if we had you know, our bell curve right here, it would say it's below one and a half standard deviations of the normal population. And just to finish off T-scores, we could, you know, you can see the left hip is negative 1.4, the neck of the femur is negative 1.8. So what would be worse? 
clearly the negative 1.8 because now you're going lower on the standard deviation, right? You're going below the average 1.8. But just because it's lower doesn't mean it's necessarily worse because go back to the scale, right? You have negative 1, and, you know, you'd have negative 2. So it's still like right about here. So it's not osteoporosis. It's not even close to osteoporosis. It's still osteopenia or low bone mass. Okay, going back up, you have the forearm. I believe there's one research article that said the forearm is um, one of the lowest scores in about 40% of uh, subjects that were tested. So the forearm is used as an indicator also of uh, bone mineral density. Just to point out the neck of the femur, here it is. Uh, that's where you get a lot of um, hip fractures because it's a weak area right there between the head of the femur and the greater trochanter. Now let's just go up here and see what's this mean. Percentage of normal versus percentage of same age. Percentage of normal says, let's compare this person who is 66 to what we call normal, which is somebody is 30. Because a supposedly bone mineral density peaks at 30 years old and technically is not supposed to change. So 30 years old. So compared to a 30 year old, this person is 85% of where a 30 year old person's bone mineral density would be. So that, that's still pretty good. And then, but now if we compare it to a person of the same age, the person who is 66, it actually has more density. This person actually has more density than somebody in the average. So it's actually higher for that age range. And as you continue here, we can see, all right, this is 81 compared to a 38, uh, sorry, compared to a 30 year old. This is compared to at the same age range, 76 to a 30 year old at the same age as in 96 and so on. So you can compare and see, you know, compared to your age range, where are you, right? Age match, that's why it says age match. Or compared to a peak reference range, so a person at 30, where would you be? Now, one more thing is to look at the chart. So if we take the patient's age here, which is 66, and let's pick the spine, all right? So a T-score of negative 1.5, and we go down. So we find, you know, 66, eh, somewhere in there. And then negative 1.5, so not the bone mineral density, but look at the T-score over here. Zero, negative, so somewhere in here. You know, we draw our lines going across, going across. So inside this blue range, right here, this blue range, this would be low bone mass or osteopenia. And then below this, this would be osteoporosis. And then up here in the green, this would be the normal range. So this value happens to be right here in the low bone mass range or the osteopedia. Are there treatments to this? Yes, of course. Uh, you might think hormone replacement therapy, like such as why don't you just take estrogen? And you could, but that's not really recommended because that's cancer causing. You can also take supplements, of course, such as vitamin D and calcium. And there are other medications as well, such as Boniva. However, the best thing, of course, is after you get your scan to go to your primary care physician and to discuss options. And one last note, if we just go back up here, it may not be on every scan because you would have had to have another previous scan. But there may be a comparison to a previous date bone scan that you had. So they'll compare the spine, the hip, and the neck of the femur. So in this case, there was a 6.2%. Uh, that would be increased compared to the previous scan. And that is significant because we're using, um, if you do your statistical test, a significance value of greater than 5%. So anything greater than 5% is gonna be considered significant. In the hip and the neck, although there was a loss in mass, it wasn't significant. It was negative 1.6 and negative three, which are both less than a 5% uh, value for significance. And that's pretty much it for a simple overview of how to read a DEXTA scan report.